morning church oh welcome to all of you in the house all of you watching online if you're brand new with us we're we're so glad that you're here and we'd love for you to get connected love to get to know you uh download our church app really that'd be the best next step to be able to get connected to the body here in fact i want to go over some of those announcements right now if we'll look at those uh we have this is our third week of connect group so what that means is if you've not joined a connect group there's still time. So check that out uh, with catalogs uh, that are the paper copies at Connecting Point or download our church app and check out those on there as well. Colorado Praise. Um, does anybody think that you have any, does anybody have an exceptional prayer life? Let me see, raise your hand. I know. Oh, good. <laughs> we got a couple, which is great. And, and I know they're already signed up to Colorado Praise, in fact. So if you want to, like, transform your prayer life, uh, this is, we've committed an hour for our church to pray for a uh, 24-hour period, 30-minute time segments, and you register for that. You get your name and a time slot, but what's great is you're able to download a prayer guide to pray for Colorado, pray for your church, pray for your family. Uh, if you go through that prayer guide and it's like, oh, I'm limping along in my prayer life, I promise you this will be a great opportunity to do that. So get registered for that. You can do that as well through our app or uh, online if you check out our website. So I encourage you to do that, especially if you've never done it. If conference, ladies, that's coming up. It's just, a, what, a couple of weeks away or so. Uh, so get registered for that. Backpacks of Love. Uh, we uh, partner with a, a local school, and we provide backpacks for the kids when they go home for spring break. They're able to have snacks and food that they otherwise might not be able to have. So we, we receive food from that. If you receive our weekly email, if you don't, you might want to register to get that. But there's a list of items that we need. And as well, we're going to, after church on the 17th, uh, they're going to be packing those backpacks then to be able to get uh, to the kids. Um, Summer camp, uh, so burritos, they're, they're next week. So this year, we're not doing them every week. We don't want you to get burned out on uh, burritos. So I think it's every other week. So if you check the email, uh, you might see that in there. But I know some people came in hungry today, and they're still hungry, but we're going to feed them on the Word of God today. So we're going to amen to that. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, help support summer camp with that. And we need a camp leader, a male, to serve uh, in this age group in the elementary uh, during that week. Uh, the Colorado Life Initiative, there is a petition uh, that, uh, that's going around to try to get an initi initiative on the ballot uh, come fall to be able to protect life. So if you've not signed that, I would encourage you uh, to sign that. Uh, Easter, check out the services. We have invite cards today on your way out. You can pick some of those up and invite people to church uh, and, and note the time so you don't like come between time, that'd be okay because you could just stick around and stay longer, greet some people or whatever. But let me pray just for the Easter services, for God to be able to make an incredible impact on our lives and our community uh, and to be able to get connected. I just want to pray for that this morning. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for just loving us so much to, to give, you, you sent your one and only son to die for the church and this is where we truly will flourish when we get planted. I pray for all that's going on and, and for those who are just kind of on, on the outside, maybe they're just looking and observing. I just pray that you would prompt them through the work of your Holy Spirit, that internal uh, gift that you give to us as believers, just to be able to uh, move us, to be able to participate, to join, to be a part, because you've suited each of us with gifts to be able to be used in your kingdom. I pray for that. I pray for the Easter coming up. 
uh, one of the biggest days of the year. I just pray that, that you would plan it right now, just, just in our minds. Just give us those names of those people that you want us to invite. I pray, Lord, the impact of this church upon our community, upon our very lives. Oh, I just pray for that right now, that we would grow in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, as we think about giving today, I want to put a verse of scripture up on the screen right now uh, from Luke. This is Jesus speaking, and um, the significance about this that Jesus is talking about what's the most, he was, he was asked a question, basically, what's the most important thing in life? And, and this is how Jesus responded. Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with a tiny bit, a tiny fracture of your heart. I, and it doesn't say that. Uh, love the Lord your God with, with how much of your heart? All of it, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. So how, how do we do that? Well, we do it with our whole life. And one of the ways as we apply it, as we think about giving today, is, is we allow God to have our, our whole wallet, our whole pocketbook, our whole financial perspective and life. And once you align that with the way God uh, wants you to align that, it's one of the most freeing experiences that you will ever know, knowing that you're participating. God set this up from the very beginning. I mean, we even learn about how Cain and Abel, one did it right, one did it wrong, and that didn't work out too well. But from like the very beginning, God just has this system in place to be able to to have his will in, in the world, to be able to promote his kingdom, particularly right now in the world. So as you think about giving, those of you watching online, I'd encourage you to consider what God has said about it. You can find information on our website about giving. And uh, so I encourage you with, with your whole heart to be able to give. Now, uh, next in our service, it's some people's favorite time to be able... <laughs> Get up and say this. Say, I am loyal, and tell them your name. I am loyal. My name is Greg. Get up and greet, greet each other. Let's just hang out, have some fun. Amen. <laughs> hey, if uh, you're brand new with us, we're in part two of this message series, Character Calibration. And I, I can't not, I, I've got to say that I don't know if there's a time where I've been, where I've been burdened, spiritually burdened, to be able to preach a message series uh, just because of what I see going on in the world today. I mean, rising up before us is a very, very secular culture, anti Christian culture, in fact, and uh, we live, I, I think, in a society where godly character has been really left behind uh, by society at large, and I, I believe that the church, uh, what God has planted, every Christ follower, all of you, should seek out the positive characteristics, uh, the, the traits that we read about in Scripture, and to calibrate our life accordingly and lead the way with godly character. Proverbs 11 and verse 6 reads, the righteousness of the upright, what's it going to do? It delivers them, but the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. So last week we talked about calibrating honor. Today we're going to talk about loyalty. Can somebody say loyalty? Loyalty. So just to set us up into this message today, 
Um, I want you to uh, think about it and uh, raise your hand if you agree, need a little participation. Would you agree that in society today, disloyalty, disloyalty is a significant problem? If you agree with that, yeah, look around. I'll, almost every hand is up. Now, now, I want you to be really, really honest in church because uh, we're going to confess something right now, and I'm not, I know you're going to confess it the right way because uh, God's watching. How many of you would say that, yeah, I, I'm a loyal person? Raise your hand. I'm a loyal. Yeah, there you go. There, yeah, they're, they're raising them up just for your sake online. I know you're raising your hand online. But this is the conundrum today. While we raise our hand, we almost think that everybody in society is a disloyal culture. But everybody in here, we're loyal. So what's that tell us? Well, that tells us that our, yeah, you <laughs> got our church is unique because in all these other churches, there's a bunch of disloyal people. <laughs> so pat yourself on the back this morning. Oh, we're going to have fun with this today. Hey, uh, if you're taking notes, and what we just did really illustrates this point. Uh, if you have your outline and you're filling that out, uh, that is disloyalty is very difficult to see where in the mirror, in the mirror. It's like, because it's, it's like, hey, if, if I'm loyal to you, uh, that's great. But if I'm not, it's your fault because you really push me too far. But if you're disloyal to me, mm -mm, no, that's, that's not happening. You know, all bets are off. Disloyalty is a big problem, uh, but it is often difficult to see in the mirror. And I learned this like when I was seven years old. And I'll just tell you a story and I'll tell you why in a minute. I'm telling this a story from a long time ago. My, we, we used to camp. Uh, my family camped. We had a little John boat. And uh, our parents would let us kids out, believe it or not, that that young. In fact, at two years of age, I took the boat out by myself. And my mom was terrified because I didn't have a life jacket. I only have pictures of it somewhere. Uh, but anyway, this is a different occasion. We went out, my neighbor, myself, my sister, older sister, she's four and a half years older than me. And we, we came back in and we, you know, hit the shore by our campsite right there. And when we did, uh, I'm facing forward there and my sister's behind me when all of a sudden she yells, snake! And I look and slithering up to the back of the boat was this huge water moccasin, cotton mouths. They're very, very poisonous. Maybe that size. <laughs> but it was wiggling up to the boat. My sister, like, stepped up because, and she high-stepped over me and the bent seats and my neighbor, who we were both younger, almost toppling the boat, which would have meant certain death for me and the snake. And I never will forget that disloyal act of my sister <laughs> and sis if you're watching right now I will well I'll try to forgive you but it's still on my heart to do that <laughs> now I tell you that story because I tried to think of an occasion when I was disloyal I couldn't think of one <laughs> why because disloyalty is very very difficult to see <clears throat> in the mirror now I'll give you a very good example of disloyalty in scripture and you probably are thinking of the guy already if you look in the New Testament, one of the guys who claimed loyalty like above any other, uh, like, hey, I want to be loyal to Jesus, was a guy named, anybody can guess, Peter. Yeah, over and over again, Jesus, I've got your back. I'm, I'm the one that's going to be loyal to you. Even if all these other losers bail on you, I am never going to bail on you, Jesus. I'm your loyal guy. So let's look at this story when we see Peter having this discussion with Jesus. In Matthew chapter 26, the Bible says, Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, what do you say? I never will. Oh, I'm never going to do that. I'm always going to be loyal to you. You can test me. You can test me. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. I'll never do that. I'll be completely loyal. Pinky promise. This is who I'm going to be. Now, if you know the rest of the story, you know that three different people came up to Peter and asked him, hey, you, you were that guy who was with Jesus, right? And he's like, what? You got the wrong... Jesus who? I don't know who Jesus is. You, Jesus who? And then on that third time, the rooster crows, and it all sunk in for Peter at that time. And he did this, and we see the expression 
from Peter when he betrayed Jesus. And it says that Peter went outside and wept bitterly because he failed. He failed at being loyal to the most loyal one that he'd ever known. So here's what we need to understand and we learn from that from that scripture text that true loyalty is proven, it's not proclaimed. True true loyalty is proven, not proclaimed. So when I ask, hey, are you loyal? You know, everybody's like, oh, definitely. But yeah, it's a problem in our culture. Uh, but it's just not me. It's just not me. But look at what the Bible says about genuine loyalty in Proverbs chapter 20. It says, many will say they are what? Loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable, who's truly loyal? Loyalty is proven. It's not proclaimed. In fact, the word for loyalty is aman. And, and it really, it, it means this, to wholly trust or believe, to be permanent, to be unwavering, to be unwavering faithful. In fact, I'll give you a, a public example uh, of loyalty that, that, that's kind of well known in the sports world, and that's of two friends. And this happened like 70 years ago. A friend of mine actually preached uh, Pee Wee Reese's funeral. Baseball player, uh, 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 he played for the Bro Brooklyn Dodgers. He and Jackie Robinson, they were really close friends. And so the story has it that when the Dodgers, when they were coming in to play Cincinnati, uh, they were there on the field and in the stands, everybody just booed Jackie Robinson because why? He, was, he made the first leap in Major League Baseball uh, to be the, the first black American to do that in the modern era. And uh, so they were standing up booing as they were casting dispersions uh, upon uh, Robinson when uh, it said that uh, um, Pee Wee Reese, he was uh, standing at shortstop, and Jackie Robinson played second base. Pee Wee Reese just threw down his mitt, his glove into the dirt, and just walked over, stopping the whole game. And he simply did this, silencing the crowd. Because loyalty is not proclaimed, but it's what? It's shown, it's delivered, it's given, it's proven. That's the way it is. It's not proclaimed, it is proven. Now, in fact, they, they did, uh, it's so famous in the sports world that they made a statue of that very, very moment because of that. So let's look in the Bible and see one of the best stories of loyalty. And you'll find many of them in there. And one you might think of off the top of your head is with David and Jonathan, but before he became king, uh, that might be one that's very, very well no known. I want to talk about one that might be not so well known. It still has to do with David when he became king, and it has to do with a commander, a soldier, uh, who became very, very, very loyal. So let me give you a little bit of context uh, to the story here. Um, King David had, had a son. His third son was Absalom, and uh, he ended up killing a guy. And uh, because of that, he had to flee for his life. Well, when he went off, he just went off. He, he, he got some troops around him, and whatever happened, he came back with those troops to where King David was, and he was going to try to overthrow his dad, the king. And so at that moment, Absalom was being very, very disloyal to his dad when his dad was very, very loyal to him, not trying to go out and do anything. So to avoid killing his own son, King David fled the city, fled for his own life, just to kind of give Absalom some time to have that restoration period to, to cool off. And there's this guy by the name of Ittai. Can somebody say Ittai? Ittai, that's good, that's good. Well, he shows up, and he's kind of like a mercenary. I mean, you can hire the guy to fight for you if you need to. He's got 600 guys under his command. And uh, this is what happens when uh, Ittai came to fight on David's behalf against David's own son. And we read this in 2 Samuel chapter 15. And we read that the king, King David, king, the king said to Ittai the Gittite. And you got to stop right there. Who? Mom and dad. It tie the get tight. Why couldn't you think of something a little bit different? Why should you come along with us? Go back and stay with King Absalom. You're a foreigner and exile from your homeland. And then he goes on. You came only yesterday. Go back and take your countrymen. May kindness and faithfulness be with you. David has this expression of kindness toward him. Uh, and he's like, well, go home. You don't have to fight on my behalf. 
You're, you don't even have any skin in the game. You know, just be free from this. But it goes on. Ittai replied to the king, and watch his loyalty here. As surely as the Lord lives, and as my Lord the king lives, wherever my Lord the king may be, whether it means life or death, there will be, there your servant will be. No matter what happens to me or my men, even if it costs me my life, I express this loyalty to you. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this. And so he didn't just proclaim his loyalty. He proved it and he, and he fought. Uh, he became a, a valiant soldier so much. So after the fact, King David promoted him, uh, to over one third of his army later on because of his loyalty. Uh, he, uh, uh, just was loyal to the hill loyalty. Well, where is it today? So since most of you are basically loyal people, what I want to do is I, I want to preach in a devil advocate's role today. What does that mean? Well, in my preaching today, I'm calling this opposite day. Can somebody say opposite day? Opposite. So this, I want you to understand this is what I'm preaching from. And I want to tell you, because you're so very, very loyal, how to be disloyal, which you never want to be. But if you did, <laughs> I want to illustrate that because this is our world today. We live in a world, we've already agreed to that, that we live, and it's a problem uh, of disloyalty. But pe people who are disloyal do this every day. So I want to look at three opportunities where people take advantage of this disloyalty. So I'm preaching kind of in a negative sense, so just bear with me when things don't sound quite right. But a great, if you're taking notes, if you want to be disloyal, well, this is the first place to do it, and it's to be disloyal to your spouse. Yeah, this is how disloyal people do it. So all you need to do to, do, to be disloyal to your spouse is to ignore the word of God when it comes to marriage. God said this in Malachi chapter two, didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? Well, that's old fashioned, a disloyal person might say. Um, so guard your heart, remain loyal to the wife of your youth. Well, who cares about that? For I hate divorce, says the Lord. I mean, Hey, if you have a 50-year-old and you trade her in for two 25-year-old, well, eh, go ahead and do that. I mean, who cares about it? Here's the problem with preaching like this. Somebody, somebody tunes in online and they're going, what, is this guy crazy? Is he, is he, and it's opposite day, okay? It's opposite day. Um, but Malachi 2 and verse 15 says, to divorce your wife is to do what? Overwhelm her with, cure, with, with cruelty. But she probably had it coming anyway, right? So guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful to your wife. So if you want to be disloyal, the most basic way is to uh, commit adultery, to have an affair, and this is what the disloyal do. I mean, statistics show us that 50% of those who marry will end up stepping out of their marriage. And, and those who don't, a real easy way to do it is people will say today, the disloyal people, they will say things like, well, they're not making me happy, so they divorce anyway. So there's all kinds of reasons to do that. And uh, some will say, you know, the only person I need to be loyal to is myself. I mean, that's what loyalty is all about. I got to be true to myself. It's just that easy. Well, if you want some creative and subtle ways to be disloyal, well, you can, you can do that too. I mean, if you go out to eat and you see this very attractive person walk along and you're sitting there with your spouse, just go. And then because... Because you're religious, you go, oh, man, you can you believe God made something that beautiful? <laughs> you know, just be subtle in such a way, and you can be disloyal. You don't even have to say things. You can actually be disloyal in your mind and think about some old flame or, or whatever, somebody at work. Just be lustful in your mind. You can do that as well. Or, or ladies, look, you can be disloyal by the way that you dress. If you've got it, flaunt it. Don't just reserve it and save it for him. Show the world, right? And remember, opposite day, if you've just tuned in, <laughs> this is opposite day. So there's many ways to be disloyal uh, in marriage. And one of the best ways, simplest ways, common ways, is to put anything ahead of your spouse or your family. You might put your hobby, your work ahead uh, of your family. You might put uh, other friends uh, ahead of them, your yard. I mean, it could just be your pursuit of things, and, and you just end up doing that. And disloyal people do this every day. 
and they're disloyal to their spouse. The second group of people, if we're looking at that, that you can be disloyal to, if that was where you ended up doing it, is with your, with your friends, with your friends. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17, a friend is always what? Yeah, but who can be that? Who's, that's crazy. <laughs> who, can be, who can do that? And a brother is born to help in time of need. So uh, a great way to be disloyal to your friends is talk about them behind their back. You know, just go and, just, oh, I, I just went to this connect group or some group at church, and, oh, you just take that information back to somebody else. You take, can you believe the way they live like that? Hey, you wouldn't believe what he said about his, his addiction. You know, yeah, and, and just do that. Just gossip about your friend. Betray your friend. And you don't even have to gossip openly, but you can just sit there and listen to gossip. Oh, yeah, without ever stopping or correcting or saying, hey, should we really be saying that? You know, it's really, um, oh, I just want to pray for them. They'll say, you know, you, you hear that for sure. Uh, but another way to do that is uh, to not tell them the truth. Your friends, you know, because what's friendship really? I just want my friends to feel good about who they are. I really don't need to tell them the truth. I don't want to hurt their feelings by doing that. So above all else, never confront them when they're doing something wrong. Never step up and say, hey, you know what? What you're doing right now is going to wreck your marriage. It's going to wreck your relationship. It's going to wreck your family. You know, don't ever do that. Just lie to them so they feel good about who they are. You know, and whenever you have a hard time with a friend, just get out of the relationship. Who cares? Drop them. Just <laughs> don't ever, like, forgive, as the Bible says, as Christ has forgiven us. Now, forget that. Just run out of the relationship if it gets hard. I mean, what are they worth anyway, right? They're just your friends. So that's how to be disloyal to a friend. So all of you perfect people, loyal people out there, I know it's hard to listen to this, but let's talk about one more, okay? Uh, another opportunity for disloyalty is you can be disloyal to your church. You can be very disloyal and, and unfaithful to your church. And this is a difference, I think, between today, going to church, we have so many opportunities, and rather than being the church, and we read some crazy stuff in the Bible about church. I mean, the New Testament Christians, they were fanatics about Jesus. I mean, they bought into the church as the hope of the world. I mean, they bought into that wholeheartedly. And, uh, and today, though, what is it? Oh, who has time for church? I mean, how are we going to do what these New Testament Christians did? I mean, Jesus impacted their lives from the very core. It, it made them weird. It made them dedicated. It made them loyal. <laughs> look, look at what we read about in Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves. Who has time for devotion? <laughs> they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. I mean, they did life together. They ministered to one another. They prayed for one another. They had fellowship with one another. They lifted one another up. It goes on. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Well, what fun is it if we can't fight and disagree and start a new church a block away? What fun? Opposite day, if you just tuned in, just wanting you to know. Okay, we'll read on. I mean, unity, really. Selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had <clears throat> need. Sounds like communism. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. Every day. Every day. Who, again, has time for that? So this is how you can be disloyal to your church. I know you're not going to do that, but if you're talking to somebody who goes to another church, you can tell them, well, this is how you're disloyal to church. Just attend church sporadically. Oh, Everybody does that anyway. <laughs> Did you realize that the average churchgoer goes to church 1.7 times a month? I don't even know how that works out, but that's what they say. And, and if you do go, make sure that you just go with a consumeristic mindset. I want to go to see how the church can minister to me. How can the church meet my needs? So if you have that thinking, and you're never going to realize that there's a difference between going to church and being the church because you're actually the 
church. So don't ever start thinking that you're not the church. And, but if you go, oh, the church is going to meet my needs, well, you're, you're never going to get plugged in. You're never going to give. You're never going to serve in any way or get involved because the church exists to serve you. And guess what? If anybody does anything that you don't like, like preaching for opposite day, I'm just going to leave. Somebody sits in my seat. They look at me cross. I can leave. No strings attached because why? You're just barely going to church. That's how to be disloyal. And I'm telling you, it happens in church all the time. Everybody take a deep breath. That was hard. And uh, so we're going to straight talk now. No more opposite day. We're going to straight do it straight. Uh, so remember, disloyalty is difficult to see in the mirror because um, I'm basically loyal. We're, you guys are basically loyal. The truth is we're basically loyal to ourselves. So what's at the root of disloyalty? If you're taking notes, disloyalty, all disloyalty is born out of a divided heart. The Bible talks about a divided heart. So let's think about this loyalty from God's perspective now. He, he created us to show us love and, and for us to have an ongoing relationship with him. Every day, all day, a relationship with him. And, and he was loyal, the Bible says, while we were still sinners, God sent his one and only son to save the world from their sin. And, and this is all that God asks of us uh, when it comes to loyalty. He wants our whole heart. We started out with this today. He wants our whole heart. In fact, this, I want to read this verse again. The guy comes up and says, what's the biggest command? Would you answer me that? And Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. He wants our whole heart, not just a fraction of it. Now, I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself. There are times when I don't give God my whole heart. I mean, with the way I think, with the way I act, the way I treat my family, I don't always get it right. So if you find yourself like me, not giving God your whole heart, oh, look at these. Let's reflect on these scriptures right now. James says this in chapter 4. He says, come close to God, and God will come close to you. Imagine the power of that. Come close to God. You're moving toward giving him your whole heart. You know you're not at times. It goes on, wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between what? God and the world. Isn't that the push between God and the world? This is, makes our heart divided. Um, and he goes on, let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. What's he talking about there? He's talking about repentance. You know, when you draw close to God, um, his goodness starts to be reflected in your own nature. And what's that do? Sometimes it just brings you to your knees. And, and, and you have the tears you have the repentance. God, I do not want to have a divided heart. But God's been so faithful to us, we're often torn. We, we can get it right. You know, as I've described it before as our journey to God. Well, it has some of these dips in it along the way. And it's like, God, I don't want to have a divided heart. I want to have this. And, and so to have this, I can't have you right now. God, I want you, but... I want some of this stuff as well. And the world pulls us away to where our heart is divided. So what do we need if you're like me? Well, we need repentance. We need to look at our life, challenge ourselves, calibrate our hearts, and think about where is it that I stand with God? So I don't know how this might apply to you today, but it, it could be uh, with your spouse uh, that you need to go home today and have a tough conversation with your spouse and say, you know, I've been disloyal to you. You know, I've been thinking about myself. It's taken me way out of the home a lot lately. 
or you know I, I don't get my thought life right enough and I feel like I've been disloyal to you so today I pledge I know I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength and I don't always get it right day by day but today we're going to do it and we're going to pray and uh, I'm going to go after loyalty and that's hard to preach after I mean is that a cute kid cute kid yes we love kids some of you it's going to be your friends and you're thinking about you know man I just dissed my friend Uh, I've done a lot lately and you're going to go and say I've just I've been so disloyal to you and I, I know a friend is to, to love at all times, but I'm telling you, uh, I've I just been thinking about myself, and I think I just, I want to tell you, I want to I be a loyal friend. This sticks closer than a brother, so there might be a friend with that. Your church, I know so many of you, especially here at the Oasis, you are so loyal, and I'm so thankful for that. And uh, there might be a couple of you, it's like, you know, I just go to church. I'm not part of the church. I don't even know that I am the church, but you're called to be the church. And you're going to go home, you're going to get on your knees. There might be tears. There might be some thought. There might be some prayers. And you're going to go, you know what, I want to be all in uh, with my whole heart. And some of you, maybe it's just with God and you're going to confess to him today that I've not been loyal to you, God. And you're going to have that two-way communication with that. Normally, it's just one way because I'm loyal to myself. (laughs) But you're going to open that up. And it's okay to hurt. It's okay to cry. It's okay to have those discussions. So if you're like me and you've got that ebb and flow, I want to go more after the whole heart thing and how do we do that we we do that through an attitude of repentance and I know I can't do it on my own but with the help of the Holy Spirit in us oh yes I can do all things through Christ so what are we waiting for today let's let's go after this this forgotten character trait of loyalty and and let's get it right let's get it right would you pray with me today father we we acknowledge that disloyalty is a a significant issue today in our world and, and it's difficult to see in the mirror and god help us to see any unfaithfulness in us that we would re- repent lord and understand that your forgiveness is real it's renewed day by day And I pray that you would do something in us through the power of your Holy Spirit, that we would draw close to you and you would draw close to us. Change us. I pray that we would be loyal to you and your word, to be the church, to be the hope of the world. And Lord, coming upon really this season right now, everybody here, this just might be the only Jesus somebody sees at the workplace, at the school, at the club, wherever. Lord, that that we would be that person that you would use to just invite somebody to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ this Easter. Lord, I pray that we just recognize how we're lost without you, that you did send your one and only son to die a horrific death on the cross, but you raised him from the grave to forgive our sins. And that sacrifice means everything. Our pledge means everything. And you tell us when we call on the name of the Lord and we're baptized into him, And we're raised up out of that water, a new creation in Christ. Lord, I pray that for us today, for somebody who's never taken that step. For those who have, I pray that we would have that moment of repentance. Help us, Lord. Help us to be loyal to you, the one who's always been loyal to us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.